Yes, we're ready to go. We're doing it. It is happening. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Significant Figures. My name is Tom Gordon, and I am a science communicator from Sydney Uni. And my job is to talk to amazing people about science. And that's what we're going to do now in Happy Science Week. Um, so before we do, I want to mention a few things. Firstly, I'm going to tell you a story. And that story is of my little seven-year-old daughter. The other day, she was playing a game with her ushies, their little ushies things from, uh, from Woolworths. She was playing with them. She lined them all up in a class, and she was the teacher. That's her game. She's very good at it. And the first thing she said the other day in her class was, okay, guys, it's time. Before we start, we just need to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we were on. And I thought that was fantastic. It's very important to my daughter that the Ushis recognize that the spot that they're doing learning is tens of thousands of years old. And it's the same learning that ha has been happening there for tens of thousands of years, just as I have been doing learning in this spot for tens of thousands of years as well. That makes it sound like I've learning for tens of thousands of years. That's not true. Um, <laughs> the land I'm on is the Wongul land. And the wherever you are, wherever you're watching from, uh, learning has happen been happening for uh, there for many, many thousands of years. And that's important to recognize, I think. Yes. The other thing is, um, I would like you to interact a little bit with, uh, with these uh, very special people who you'll meet in a moment. And you can do that through uh, YouTube comments. So if you go to the YouTube uh, site, make some comments, and I can post those on the screen there. And we will be able to uh, start having some fun with some interaction. Now, if you do some interaction and you tell me about it afterwards, you can win some stuff. I've got some Science Week stuff to give away. And uh, so please interact and, and we can uh, help get some things. The things you can get are things like this T-shirt, which is a Science Week T-shirt. Also a cap. You can have a Science Week cap. I've got some badges and some stickers and some tote bags. Lots of stuff for you to have if you can start interacting. And I'll send you a little bit of a link afterwards for a survey. And that's how you can get some free things. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. So we're going to start introducing to you now our significant figures before we get into our games. And I'll start with you, Dane. Can you say hi and introduce yourself? Yeah. G'day. Uh, I'm Dane Simpson. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, racist people call me Adam Briggs. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I'm a comedian. I live in Wagga Wagga. Um, the regional Ernie Dingo, I think, is... Uh, Jamie Way has referred to me before, which we'll meet <laughs> very soon. <laughs> That's uh, perfect. Thank you. And also, like, I don't know why I'm here because I'm the world's biggest idiot. But we'll we'll see just how stupid I actually am. It's a good measure. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll push the boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about you, Jamie? Go for it. Uh, yes, well, I uh, I am the aforementioned Jamie Way. Uh, I'm also in Wagga Wagga, Wiradjuri country. Uh, I am a, an entertainer, photographer, and videographer, uh, jack of all trades. I, I'm the um, I've been called the regional Hugh Jackman. Yeah, <laughs> I do a, do a bit of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And over to you, Sally. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sally Bryant. I'm with the ABC. I'm the breakfast presenter on ABC Riverina. I don't think I've ever been referred to as the regional anything. I'm known yeah. for being a little bit noisy, I guess, because I, I talk I call a lot. you the, the regional Kyle from Kyle and Jackie O. So. <laughs> oh, oh that's low. That is low, low. low. <laughs> Lower than the snakes to Medina, mate. You are so on my list. <laughs> the regional John Laws. I don't know. Am I getting better? I don't know. You can't dig yourself out of a hole, Dane. <laughs> and 
these, right. uh, these ladies and gentlemen are our significant figures. I'm very excited. I'm very happy. This is going to be a lot of fun. So let's get into starting to um, ask some questions of our significant figure, who is a mystery guest, who is off in the green room at the moment. They can see us. They can hear us. And we're going to ask some questions. Uh, yes and no questions to try and figure out what they do. And this round is called 22 over 7. It's a maths joke. 22 over 7 is a, an approximation for pi. So we've got 22 yes or no questions in seven minutes. I'll start the timer. You start asking questions. We'll go uh, Dane, Jamie, Sally. How's that? Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, ask, ask some yes, no questions. Our our scientists will give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and I will convert that into uh Yes or yes no, or depending not. on how we go. And then First let's of all, do like, it. Okay. When, when, we're, when we're talking like mystery figures, like my, I've whacked on eight kilos in the past year or so because of I'm stuck at home. Mysterily, my figure is growing. So I feel like I'm going to be good <laughs> at this somehow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <It's> a, <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's start with figure. you, Dane. Let's start right, with let's you. I'm going to press the go button and uh, let's I'm counting. I'm timing. Go. Your time starts now. All right. Um, the, ooh, are we talking about uh, a man? No. No. Ah. All right. No, that's one question. So then it passes to me? It does. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, mystery figure. Um, it, it is, is the field of your uh, work in uh, sort of natural phenomena or artificial phenomena? So natural for yes, artificial for no. That is a no. So artificial. Artificial. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Sally, question Ooh, number three. Significant figure. I want to know, are you someone who speaks regularly to the media or do you fly under the radar? Yes for speaks regularly to the media, no for fly under the radar. <laughs> yes speaks regularly to the media. <laughs> I know what you're trying oh. to do. I love it. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. All right. So a woman uh, who deals in the media, uh, oh, it's Cash Cow. <laughs> this is Boom, done. <laughs> Show's over. I'm out. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, I have no idea about science at all. So um, would the average bear know of your awards or, um, like, work? The average person know about your work? That's a no. The average person would not know about your work. Hmm. Go, Jamie. Okay. Uh, mystery significant figure. Um, do you have a regular program of your own, like a podcast or a radio segment or TV nice. show? No. That's a no to that. Oh. Mm. Mm. Mystery significant figure, would you like a program of your own? Because I think I can organize it. Because we know people. <laughs> that was that was a, a very enthusiastic thumbs up. So yeah. I'm not I'd surprised. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. All right. Um, let's Next try and one. get into the field. So um, I don't know much about science. Do you work with animals? Yes. Nice question. Hmm. Uh, yes. Do, oh, okay. Do you work strictly with one type of animal? I.e. say, do you work just with reptiles or just with mammals? Like, is it just one type of animal? One type of animal? No. Hmm. That is a okay. no for one type of animal. We have four so minutes left. Mystery figure, do you work with them while they're dead or while they're alive? Are you looking at them Great under question. slides or while they're pottering around on feet? So uh, a yes for dead? Yep. Oh, that's a, <laughs> it's a yes and a no. <laughs> oh, dead and alive. Both. Both. <laughs> it's Erwin Schrodinger. Alive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's who it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Amazing. <laughs> I I had no idea that his first name was Edward. Um, Eddie. 
Eddie Schrodings. I um, what about land or water? So, do are they in the water? Yes, and no, also. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but the yes was first. I saw the thumbs up first. Yeah, there you go. So okay. let's go with yes, but not surprised when it's no. Um, mystery person, uh, is is your field like a, um, uh, a a treatment type thing, like a medical type thing for animals, or is it more of a research type of deal? Like, so is it focused yes at, for like treatment? <laughs> it, uh, okay, so <laughs> once again, yeah, yes. Okay, it's yes. complicated. That's yes, <laughs> it's correct. It's complicated. Uh, I'd say yes, treatment. Okay, treatment. but also so don't revealing, be surprised when yeah. it's not that. Revealing my background in rural journalism, mystery figure is your research in any way associated with farming and primary production? Yes. Ooh, that's mm. yes. Ooh, okay. Very that good. changes what I was gonna what I was gonna ask. Um we have two right. minutes left. Are we are we working together on this or is it just just are we going to I'm slow? I'm stealing your ideas here, so you yeah. can bring mm. out the good ones. Um work together. Okay. Yeah. So uh so what are, where are we going with this? So they're farmers or they they work with animals on the farm, dead and alive. Um, so research on the farm related research. to primary production, yeah. Farming animals. Oh, they're also in water as well. So yep. um, oh. you can pass if you like. Yeah, mm. yeah all right. I'll pass. Go, Jamie. All right. Hit him with that. Over Good to you, stuff. Jamie. Mystery person. Are the animals you work with very, very small? Yes. Yes, they are ah. very, very small. Yes, very, oh. very small. Ch like chiefly very, very small. Mystery person, yes. are the animals you work with, would they be said to be pests? Yes. All right. We are, we are on now. That's uh, 15 questions. We have 48 seconds left. Quick, Danny. Okay. Oh, Danny, um, go, go, go. So some kind of microbiology? Um, so yes, some sort of microbiology. <laughs> Anything else? Um, maybe, uh, maybe like an entomologist, like a bug expert. Yes, yes. With twenty-one seconds, I'm going to call cool. that. Yep. I think. Unless you want another question, Sally. No, 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 no. I'm struggling. I reckon we should call that. We had. 20 seconds to go. We had seven questions to go. I think that's cool. enough. I think it's time to introduce our amazing mystery guest. It is Shokufes Shamsi. Woo! Hello! Woo! Woo! Hi, Sally. Have you met before? You may remember. I know. I remember. <laughs> I've seen your timer. amazing drawings. Yes. And I was just amazed by the question you asked. I thought, oh, <laughs> she's going to get there right away. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone! Thank you. So, so how close? How close were we, Shoko Fred? Do you want to? Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do? I mean, uh, the start was a little bit rough, but then you guys just straight went to it. Um, but I, you know, like uh, yes, it's uh, I'm a parasitologist. I work on parasites, and oh. uh, that's why Tom said be prepared for anything to be yes or no because it's all sorts of animals. My favorite ones are parasites of fish, but I do research on all other parasites. And it's also farming systems, aquaculture, but also wildlife. It, it could be from medical aspect and treatment, veterinary aspect, but it is also for research because parasites are an important part of our environment. And to, they bring balance to our environment. Like they say, bugs are good for you. You get sick, your immune system gets strong. Parasites do the same thing for environmental health. So it's both, all aspects of it. It was very difficult for me to say yes or no. <laughs> but the wow. questions were great. And you were just getting there without knowing that how close you get. So yeah. that's really good. Thank you. That's crazy because Jamie Way has been called a parasite 
before as well. <laughs> Numerous <laughs> times. <laughs> That's just my mum. That's <laughs> your greatest yeah, fan. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys have any questions before we go on to uh, round two? Because it's going to get real in round two. I just I want you to it. tell the story of these the amazing drawings you do of the parasites because they are so beautiful. Oh, you still remember? Thank you. <laughs> how how long have you been doing this for? Oh, I'm going to give away my age. That's a tricky question. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Since 1993. Wow. Way before I come to Australia, yeah, and I came to Australia in 2002. Yeah. Was still alive. I remember it well. <laughs> <Great. laughs> yeah. And did you go straight to Wagga when you came to Australia? No, no. Um, it, it's funny. I, I don't know how much time we have, but you know, like I never thought I'm going to end up to be a parasitologist. You, you know, like you ask children what you want to be in future, you never hear anyone says, "I want to be a parasitologist." <laughs> But I was always interested in biology and I got graduated and then the job opportunity came up to become researcher back home in Iran. And uh, they uh, said, but we don't have a position for you in the biology department. We have position for you in parasitology department. And uh, it's still so difficult to get job as a researcher and especially as a female researcher. So I just said, yes, I didn't want to miss the opportunity. And the boss promised me she's, he's going to transfer me to biology department the first vacancy come up. <laughs> and, but then when the vacancy come up, I didn't want to go. It was just so fascinated by how cool these things are. They, they are not what you think they are. It's just so beautiful. And then they even got me a scholarship from University of Melbourne. So I came 2002 to Melbourne to do my PhD. And then, of course, Australia is my home now. And so I lived in Melbourne about eight years, and then I joined CSU in Bogor in 2010. Oh, nice. Yes. Cool. So, oh, so Lord, let's Lord. find out a little bit more about parasitology. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out some jargon terms from uh, Shokufe's field. And I want you, as our significant figures, to try and work out what these terms mean. And then after a few guesses, we'll uh, we'll work out if you're right, and then we'll get a, um, a description of what these terms mean from Shogafe. How's that sound? We're good. Oh yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right, here we go. So we'll we'll get through as many of these as we can. I've got a whole bunch of them, and I'll just mention the first one. Here we go. It is called, and please let me know if I pronounce it right. Schizo schizogeny. Is that right? <laughs> Yeah, you could say that, or schizogony is another one. Yeah. Schizogony, there you go. What does that mean? Schizogony. So if it was about schizophrenia, it would be about multiples of something or fracturing of something. And if there was a bit of genus in there, so a, a variety of genuses altogether, sort of, uh, am I guessing in the right area there somewhere? Oh, nice. Anyone That's, else wants yeah. to guess? Sally, you're amazing. <laughs> you really are amazing. That's skid, skidogamy is what you'd find in my undies when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of parasitology going on. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. what is okay. schizogeny? So, schizo means multiple. And you better spot on on that. Goni or it just refers to producing. So parasites have amazing ability. I mean, their sexual ability is just amazing. I don't think any other animal can, has that uh, ability to produce offspring. And uh, usually you see, for example, you know about this, uh, that amoeba or a lot of other um, female cell animals they produce. There is one cell or one amoeba, it becomes two. So it calls binary division. But some parasites have schizogony kind of production, which means one single uh, host, like you call it like the mother, it just becomes 100 in the second generation. So instead of from one having two, instead of one, you have hundreds. And then each of these second generation make another hundreds. And that's why in a short amount of time, 
they actually have big population, big outbreak can happen. Wow. So that refers to that. So that's mul producing multiple uh, offspring in the second generation. Cool. That's cool. That 100% awesome. And we're going to go to our next term, which is spicule. Spicule. I've, I've heard this before. Um, spicule. It's like... Uh, Oh God, no! I can't think of it. Um, oh my God, that, that's a bit creepy because you just said you are in your main cave and be there just <laughs> teasing you about it, and you said you heard this word before. It, that's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. So, it's, so it's spicule is something you would find in a cave, is it? <laughs> no, but maybe your cave. I don't know. It's a lot usually. <laughs> When you work out what the word is meant, you will wish that you didn't say that. <laughs> oh, this is so yes. funny. Stick, you'll forever hold your peace. That's what I feel like. <laughs> um, I've, I've definitely heard the word before. I just can't pick where from. So I was just distracted for a moment by someone trying to sell me a pizza. So <laughs> what was the word again? Spicule. 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 Sounds yeah. S P I C U L E similar, yeah. Correct. No idea. Sorry, completely flawed. Spicule. Um, All right. What is what is spicule? So a spicule is the name of the male uh, part of the male reproductive system in worms in nematodes. So it, basically, it's equivalent to penis in men. <laughs> ah. Yeah, that's right. That's going. Yeah. To that's going to be a very useful word. I'm remembering that. <laughs> word yeah, penis. Now, now I know why I've not heard it before. <laughs> and, you may, and you may want, you know, like that might be interesting for you to know that nematodes actually have two spicules. <gasps> oh, Lucky them. Bless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag blessed. I don't know. I don't know if you want. <laughs> Oh, if you want two, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with one. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm... struggling. Yeah, I'll struggle, bro. I, I don't know what, like, you know, you come home, you, you've had a few beers. Like, you, you don't want two. You want just for one. What, for the, for the purpose of aim, you want more accuracy with just the one? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. I'm... Right here. I'm hearing you. My, um, <laughs> My my dad, who passed away several years ago, ha used to have a saying that um, you must have two spicules because you couldn't be that silly playing with just one. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Dad. <That's> <laughs> so um, before that Good goes uh, off the rails, let's go to our next uh, our next term. The next term is. Oh, we're going to have some good guesses here. Venereal transmission. What does that mean? Uh, uh, it, would it be something transmitted through sexual contact? Anyone uh, else has any other guess? That's pretty much what I would, <laughs> what I would have guessed uh, as well. I've heard oh, this my. in my man cave. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Sally, you're the star of the night, I think. Venereal actually comes from Venus, goddess of love, and venereal oh, transmission ah. is sexual transmission. Yeah. I will add that this is all through professional understanding rather than any personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> I, am a, I am a consummate professional, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what does it tell about people if they know the answer to these questions? It's all about... <laughs> It means they're informed and very sensible. But they might have a bright future in parasitology ahead of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the thing I like about it is is the, the root of the word, venereal transmission. It comes from, yeah, like you said, uh, Venus, the goddess of love. I love that. That's really yeah. Do you know what I love? I love the fact that you called it the root of the word. I'm sorry. I had to say that. <laughs> in, in my mind when I was oh, saying no. that, I was like, don't, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love that. Right. I love that. That's so funny. Venus, the root of all the. Yeah, whatever. 
Actually, it should come from Uranus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm so um, sorry. Next word. Next word. Um, I, I put this one in there as well because it's got a bit of um, like the etymology of the word, which I really love. Parasite. What does that mean? What What does parasite mean? Well, para uh, para is from it means like over or like covering, doesn't it? Um, or is it? Hang on. Maybe yeah, you could. Out, like outside of, uh, like I'm thinking paranormal. Mm. Uh, parachute. So that would be extra. Parachute, I think. Yeah. Outside Ex- would be is extra, extra, like outside of. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could put think it about... that way. Yeah, I think that's close enough. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely made um, of two words. So you're you're getting there. Yes. Um, and site would that be from like situ, in situ, mm. like location? No. Something anyone like, else want to have a guess? It's no. very similar to that, but in this case, it doesn't mean that. It comes from the Greek word uh, "citos." Ah. Yep. I like the way you say "ah" uh, because I've got no idea what "citos" means. <laughs> Oh, no, all right. I, I put all my eggs in the situ basket. What, what make you? You said that your mother calls you parasite. What did you do? He's <laughs> <laughs> just uh, a pest. Yeah. Yeah, but what make you a pest? Why do you call that pest? I mean, when you call someone in your life a parasite, or you've been called parasite. Yeah, well, I, I suppose you could work back from that. That's so. What's that's something that kind of subsists off uh, off a host, like it kind of. Um, either takes away from the nutrition of the host or eats the leftovers. Is that what you did? You ate all the food at home? Yeah. Yeah. I Uh, I used to be quite a bit heavier than this. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Para means neighbor um, and sitos comes from bread. So in old Greek times, they used to call people who steal bread from their neighbors. um, That is fascinating. Yeah. And then later uh, on, of course, Brazil. it became Latinized and then went to a few other languages. And these days, biologists use it to this type of lifestyle. And so, like, if you have a roommate that comes and steals food from your fridge and that sort of thing is parasitos. But if you're biologist, these two have to be completely different species. The par- yeah. parasitologist cannot name another human being as parasite. <laughs> because they are the same species. <laughs> You, that's a you know what get me in i'll call on that it's fine you know, <laughs> yeah. dane and but i deal in metaphors we do yeah we don't have to worry about the classifications we we, we can call people metaphorical parasites absolutely yeah i'll do call you still anyone call them parasites do you still call them parasites when they're in a symbiotic relationship with their host when it's mutually beneficial hmm. uh no that's uh so there is like all uh, shades of the, <laughs> yeah. you know, relationship. Like, the, like those little fish that hang on to the bottom of sharks. Yeah. Is that like, yeah. 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 So there are technically parasites uh, are those that uh, benefit from their host. But if they become so deadly and kill their host, then they die too because they cannot yeah. live without their yeah. host. So the good, the successful parasite is the one that lives without killing its host and causing a lot of problems. Like, I yeah. don't know, you heard about toxoplasma, for example, is a parasite that is mm. estimated about 50% of Australians are infected with it, or 80% of French. And uh, it's very, very common. We all have it. Actually, for women especially, it's really good to be infected already before they become pregnant. And um, if you're not infected, it's actually bad news as a woman who's planning to have children. Um, uh, and this is basically, there is no treatment or any, I mean, doctors, if they know you have it, they just let you live your life as you are, unless there is some immune system problem, then they give you medication for it. But in a healthy person, they just let live with the parasite. Mm-hmm. And then there are yeah. those that are very, very bad and cause big disease. Mm. Yeah. It's that you're very good at what you do because I'm learning and I'm enjoying. And that is very That's difficult good. for me to do. I am, <laughs> I am phenomenally a bad learner. I am constantly going, nah, you try to teach me something, I'm leaving. I'm going to go watch Fast and the Furious 9. 
You know what I mean? But <laughs> where not only am I not learning, but I'm getting dumber. Whereas this is really hey, interesting and it's really They good. went to I, space in that one. They went to space. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. And they shouldn't have. That's <laughs> in a Pontiac um, Fiero. Well, <laughs> so I'm going to go to our next term. And uh, this might be our last one, depending on time. But here we go. And again, if I get this wrong, please tell me if I've pronounced it wrong. But it is boops, boops. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you did pronounce it wrong. I'll tell you how to yeah. pronounce it. <laughs> There you go. Boops, boops. B O O P S B O O P S. Boops, boops. What is that? Uh, I just love the idea of of you guys walking around the office using that jargon. Uh, Boops, boops. (laughs) It's it's what C three PO says to you when he wants you to open the door. (laughs) Boops, boops. It sounds like something I might say when I'm tapping my Jack Russell on his nose. On his nose. I was just about to say that. That's what you do to all the puppies. You boops them. Give them yeah. boops, 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 boops. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's oh, a good boy? he's a good boy. <laughs> boops, boops. Um, okay, so let's let's think about this a little bit logically. So it's a repeat of the fir- the the word twice. So yeah. We, so there's got to be a reason. Is for it that, one of those things it? where it's like the name? You know how um um like the the name of the common rat is Rattus Rattus. Something like that? Is it uh, something yeah, along okay. those lines? Is, yeah. the, is it the, yep. the, 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 the class name or something? Oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh, you give yourself a gold star there, Jamie. Well done. Oh, gold star. I also, I think of Raddus P. Raddus from the Ferals when you just said that. <laughs> That's where my brain goes. I, I don't That's know good. anything. And Medigliana. All right, we're getting off track. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> So is that a rat? So can I reveal the meaning now? Or yes, yes please to... tell yeah. us. I think that's as good uh, as we're going to get. Scientific name, not ratus ratus that you said. It's a scientific name. Scientific name, boops boops. But it's a scientific name of a fish. It's a small fish that is found in eastern coast of Atlantic. And boops again comes from the Greek word. It means cow eye. They have like a. These are a small fish, but the size of the eye is relatively large to the size of the fish. And uh, so one is genus, one is the species. That's how the scientific name works. They always have two words. But why both of them are boops, boops? No idea. Maybe because there are two eyes or maybe because the, the discoverer was a man, just loved it. I have no idea. <laughs> so it's, it's a it fish sort of with sounds, huge eyes. It sounds like a fish that might have appeared in Finding Nemo. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> <a fish. laughs> or it's, just, you know, if it's. If it's a fish with large eyes, it's like the um, Marty Feldman of fish. It's the Emma Stone of fish. Ah, uh, yes. It's, all... <laughs> it's the Rodney yes. Dangerfield of fish. <laughs> oh, I, I no respect. fish. What about uh, that fish in The Simpsons? Would that be boops, boops, boops? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I just, I love the idea of this person. Oh, we haven't named this fish before. Yeah, it's got big eyes, big eyes. Like, why, why did you call it? Oh, you have to, you can be amazed if you know how people sometimes have a lot of humor in naming scientific names. So, I know this parasite that has very spiky, uh, full of you know, like needles, and it's a spicule. If you remember the meaning of the spicule, and the person who discovered it and wanted to name it named it after his supervisor. <laughs> 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 and I can tell you many other things. So if you are a parasitologist, be very careful when you're friend with a parasitologist. <laughs> oh, I bet you the joke yes. went right over their head too. They were like, oh, they, they take honor. revenge. They take revenge in a very weird way. <laughs> and it's it's in the books forever as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's it. Once it's named, it's it's the it's that's it. Yes, and then you may not even know why, and you may just go everywhere and brag about it. I've been named after this parasite without knowing yeah. anymore. And here we have a prime specimen of the Dane Simpson needle knob. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, they're not too far off already, so it's, that's, that's all right. 
All right, what, uh, what I might do is <laughs> I might bring an end to round two and we might go into round three, which is uh, which is very exciting. Can I can That's I get an extra master. twenty points for that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Shameless self promotion. <laughs> I have no problem with that. I'll just check with the judges. Yep, that's fine. You can have yep, another perfect. point. Excellent. In the lead. Okay, by so let's three. <laughs> let's go to the next round. It's called Two Truths and a Lie. So I'm going to read out these. Um, or do you want to read out your three th th three facts there, Shokafe? No, or do you want me to do it? Yes, yeah, no, okay. yeah. I'll read them out. Um, uh, try to keep a poker face and I want you three to please work out which one is the truth and which one is the lie. You can kind of discuss it a little bit All and right. then we'll talk about it. Okay. Number one, I speak a language in which you are the coroner of my liver means I love you. That's number one. I love that. N number two, in a job interview for a biologist, I was questioned about scriptural law for about an hour. Wow. That's not me, by the way. That's that's your fit, no. not me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the lie, oh my god, I just gave it away. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, <laughs> can we get an extra 20 points for that? <laughs> no, can yeah, I say something? Can I say something? Hold on. I no, think he oh. mixed it up. He mixed it up. Do you mind you read the three sentences? I think you got the order wrong. Okay, Sorry about no it. worries. But you read, how about you read the same three sentences and they say okay, I'll read, which one is a lie, which sentences. one is the truth. Whew. Saved that's <laughs> by okay. someone that's more intelligent than me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> number one. I speak a language in which you are the coroner of my liver means I love you. Ooh. Two, in a job interview for a biologist, I was questioned about scriptural law for an hour. Three, I named a newly discovered species of worm after my daughter. Oh. They're the three oh. sentences. Mm. See, now you as can act surprised. People be naming stuff. <laughs> I can edit stuff. that out. <laughs> no, having said could... that, know that some parasites are really, really beautiful and good looking. Yeah. Sally can say <laughs> that. She's sort of you of them in my office. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Um, so there is also not that all of we have female parasites too. So yeah. <laughs> now the mm. the language where what was it? You are the coroner of my liver. Not, not coroners. Uh, is you're the corner of my liver. Oh, the corner. Oh, the corner. Sorry. Oh, the, oh, the corner. corner. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's you, pretty visceral, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's um, it's very hepatic. Or someone is corner of liver of someone else. Yeah. Uh, so you you said you're Iranian originally. Yes. So uh, is it Farsi that they speak in Iran? Yes, that's correct. Which is a get very you any point. um. Which, as far as I like, I I don't speak any Farsi, but I, as far as I'm aware, there's a lot of um. It's it's a poetic sort of language. There's there's nuance and sort of there's color and light to it you know yes um so that seems like that could be something that's is beautiful in farsi but lost in translation to I, I think you're right yes i, I think mean liver is liver in any language anyhow the look of the liver doesn't make any difference <laughs> so when you say to someone you're the no, no, but, of the my liver. Liver. but the liver is yes. essential the liver the liver is yeah, can't you, and, and can't provided you, can't you it... don't cook it up with tripe or onions. <laughs> <laughs> with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Yeah, that, that you... means I really love you. <laughs> <laughs> some of your liver to somebody else? Depends on it. You could look at it from the point that it's essential, so that means you love someone, or because you cook it yeah. and chop it and cook it, that means you're very angry with someone. <laughs> yes, it could. Mm, that's true, too. But anyhow, I'm not supposed to give you any clues. Yeah. I, I, no, I, think, but I'm thinking, I think we have I three sentences. One of them is a lie. I speak a language in which you're the corner of my liver means I love you. In a job interview for a biologist, I was questioned about the scriptural law for about an hour. 
I named a newly discovered species of worm after my daughter. Which one is a lie? Which one is true? I, what if, I, I, like, I, I like the liver one for truth. That's something yeah, I just, that just occurred to me too. The corner of your liver would be right over next to your heart anyway, wouldn't it, from a from a certain angle? Like, doesn't it sort of sit? Heart is a little bit toward left. Liver is right. Yeah, your liver is right. But like, if, if, if but your liver is also sort of shaped like Victoria, isn't it? Like it's kind of <laughs> thick yes, on one end and thin on the other. That's right. But Victoria <laughs> not in lockdown. Yeah. That's yeah. You can draw a straight line between the two at least, Jamie. Yeah. I think. So maybe it's a bit more literal than I than I first thought. Maybe the corner of your liver is like right next to your heart. Maybe that's where it comes from. Could be. Could be. Anyhow, so I kind of like to move on from, from the one. liver at the moment. Mm. <laughs> Um, what? Look, I'm really intrigued by be, the the number of questions about um, religion in an interview. That's that's fascinating. Can we do a deep dive into that? Yeah. Well, did you both share the same religion? Um. Yeah, but I guess you need. How do you want to run it, Tom? I'm happy to explain, but then it will give you the answer: which one is lie, which one is true. Yeah, yeah. How about give, you first give, pick give a, your yeah. pick and then I explain if you want to. How about that? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. yeah. You guys, you guys choose one, and then we'll and then yeah. we'll explain. Choose one. I'm <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I'm going to. I'm. I. I think that the religion one is just crazy enough to be true. So I'm thinking that you possibly didn't name your daughter after a worm or something. But, yeah. Or a worm after your daughter, even whichever way around. But that's <laughs> only because, and only because of what's going on in the world at the moment with religion just being just so far, much at the forefront of everything that seems to be happening. So there yeah. you go. How about how about we lock that in? Is that right? You named a newly yeah. discovered species of worm after your daughter as the lie. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Is it toward yeah. me or toward people? Yeah, I, now, I, I now agree. Now it's I you, Sh yeah. Fair, what oh, okay. is the lie and what is All the right. truth? The lie is I named a newly discovered pieces of worm after my daughter. However, however, <laughs> there is this beautiful worm. When you look at it under the microscope, it has something like a star sitting on its face. And uh, oh. I showed it to my daughter, and it's going to be named after my daughter. It's just whenever I have oh. time to write about it, <laughs> it's coming oh. up. Not yet, so that's the law. But it hasn't happened yet. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So there's so time right. for me to make a case. So there's preemptive truth. Yeah, oh. kind of, yeah. But, I mean, the reality is it hasn't been happened, so it's not. But <laughs> yeah. the plan is one day uh, that parasite has to get a name and it will come after my daughter. But then you give a name to something, you also have to write about it, you have to publish it, it has to go through examiners and then yeah. get approved. So it, it has a steps. That's, and I, I approve it, I reckon that that's how it should be because otherwise you've got idiots like me naming these things sexy, cool, muscle, Dane Simpson or something like that. So yeah, or, or <laughs> Wormy McWorm face. <laughs> yeah. You, you need people who are willing to do all I of the... Just be, all day I'd just right. be Wormy McWorm face 14, Wormy McWorm face 15. <laughs> I could go on and on. But you see, you see, this is why life allows some people to be scientists and some people to have children because, you know, some people <laughs> can just have kids and name them. And then some people have to write papers and, you know, come up with good rational explanations for calling things certain names. What do you reckon? I definitely owe my daughter a lot because um, she was 26 days when I started my PhD. And oh. um, I did all my love and, like, I was a single mother, but I can't tell you how many times I spent time in the lab dissecting fish, other things in the post somewhere with my daughter next to me so she's been okay. part of everything with me she i, I feel yeah anyhow yeah. and so, has so she she, she, she pursued that, a career that, in science as well or yeah she definitely has a passion for science but um yeah she's at university but she's 
doesn't want to become a parasitologist. <laughs> Although she does a lot of time assignments on that and impresses her teachers because her lecturers, they don't expect to see something about parasites <laughs> not on their desk. So yeah. how many, so if you've discovered a new type of worm that you will be naming after your daughter, how many other types of worms have you discovered or other parasites? Um, so the published one, we have 37 that has been published about them. So they are approved, registered in the museums. They have names and everything. But there is plenty more. It's just it needs time to, you know, like go through the whole process to do the rest of them. Yeah, they, they have plenty from everywhere in the world. Yep. So when you One discovered day, your first... When you discovered your first one, was that like, oh, my God, I discovered something, and now it's just like uh, another one. We discovered another one. Uh, yeah, because there are so many of them. You know, like, it, it's the expertise that doesn't exist anymore. You know, like, parasites are hidden. They are small. And then at the top of that, they are hidden inside other animals. So people really don't see them. And, you know, like, we are humans. If you don't see them, so they don't exist. So why would we care when you, there are so many other things you can see around you and impress you? And uh, and then again, identify them and tell them one is different from the other. It needs many hours of microscopy and stuff like that. And you don't really get many people interested to sit at the corner of the lab and sitting there spending time to get their eyes trained with that. I mean, we are lucky we get the students uh, at university that really, really love it. But um, yeah, but overall, it's a it's an expertise that is we don't have many, unfortunately. Yes. Mm. Mm. So that's why there are plenty out there and there's not enough time just to do it that, you know, like my main job is teaching at university and doing other um, things and research comes at the top of that. So, yeah. I was but going to, um, I was going to ask before, are there, are there any interesting or weird or, or bizarre ways that parasitology changes with geography? Like, is it, are there things that are wildly different to Australian parasitology in Iran or vice versa? Like, Oh, yes, absolutely. It, it's a very fascinating area because that's the thing, you know, like I have accents and especially Boga is a small community. And 2010, when I came here, believe me, there are not many people with dark eyes and dark hair. <laughs> now it's more multicultural. I remember I came here, I came, went to Bayless Street with my daughter to find a real estate, to find a house to rent. And then after a couple of times going up and down Bayless Street, I could tell everyone knows there are two strangers in this town. <laughs> but anyhow, it's, it changed now. But anyhow, so it's different. And then people ask me, who you are, what do you do in Boga? And I say, yeah, I'm a parasitologist. And they say, what? I do work on parasites. And they say, but Australia doesn't have parasites. I say, yes, it does. Actually, the same way that you have beautiful things and uh, colors and stuff like that, you actually have one of the most good looking parasites are in Australia. I can show, I mean, if I could share my screen, I could show you to you. Um, but anyhow, um, um, so that that's that. But then that's another interesting thing is with, uh, for example, with introduction of farming like bringing cattle to australia or a lot of other farmed animals or cats or you know like anything else a lot of fish that came to australia like ornamental fish for example um then came many parasites with them and it's still they come with them even like one of the projects i'm working now is looking at the biosecurity protocols in australia and you will be amazed that uh, in Australia, that you know, like at the airport, you see, you come first time I came to Australia, they even checked under my boots to make sure that there is no soil or anything yeah. there, understandably. Mm. And I, as a biologist, I'm 100% with that. I think it's a great thing they do at the airport to make sure that nothing comes to Australia. But then, massive amount of other live product or biological products that are dead come to Australia, they get checked for viruses, bacteria, but not for parasites. Um, and uh, so many of them came here, got established. Example is a very interesting one. We call it tongue worm. It's not a worm kind, and it's not a tongue, uh, but it looks right. like a tongue. That's why it's called tongue worm. It actually lives inside the nostrils of dogs. 
Uh, wow. And we published several Ooh. papers about that too, which is invasive species came to Australia. But they have, yeah, no, they have plenty that are unique and plenty that got transferred, unfortunately, between different countries. Yeah, that's cool. Something that lives inside the nostrils of dogs. Oh, that's not good. It's actually huge. It's 15 centimetres long. The, the federal but politician. Nobody, the federal <laughs> politician. But no one ever, you know, like no one looked at it. And when we started to examine dogs and things and found that like something about, I think, 64% of them were infected, it was just amazing. But just because oh. of deep high in the like sinus area in dogs, yeah, no one really looked at that area. And then yeah. the symptom is like they have runny nose and things, so they just get completely overlooked. Hopefully not anymore because we published several papers and um, that's but just yes. extraordinary. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so what we might do is kind of seamlessly transition into the last round, which is you can yeah. ask that. So if you have any questions, please go for it. This is this is a chance to learn more about parasitology, and the, that goes for anyone who is uh, watching on Facebook or YouTube as well. If you have a question, please ask, um, and we'll we'll ask a question about parasites to Shoku Fair. Go for it. Ooh. Um. Mm. And you can have 20 points, Dane, for every question. Yay! All right. <laughs> That'll um, get him going. <laughs> why, why don't people love me? Uh, why don't people love my show? Why don't we go to any shows? <laughs> um, so is there good parasites and bad parasites? Like you have good um, stomach... What do, you, what do you call them? You know when like they're... Bacteria. You, Bacteria, Four. yeah. You know how you get good and yeah. bad bacteria? Okay, so parasites, um, let's put it that way. Parasites species, their diversity are huge. There are so many parasites on the planet. We actually have more parasitic species than we have free living species. Wow. Um, so yeah. basically that means it's good to be parasite. <laughs> and uh, as long as human doesn't interfere, with the balance of the ecosystem, I personally think all of them are good parasites because they bring balance oh. to the system. Yeah. As I said, a parasite is dependent on its host, so it can't really live without its host. If they are too bad and too dangerous, they will kill the host, so they die too, so they cannot survive. We won't see them. And then they are just in enough abundance that stimulate the immune system and the balance of population of all the species in the environment. But unfortunately, we change a lot of things in our system. We change, for example, water flow in our river system because of, I don't know, whatever reason. And uh, we don't, don't see parasites and we don't even include them in any decision making about conservation of river system or aquatic animals and stuff. And as a result of that, uh, because some parasites population goes higher, and then when their population become out of control, then they can become in invasive and sometimes dangerous. No. Um, but otherwise, even the most dangerous parasites yeah. cannot be that dangerous if they have a healthy environment, in my opinion. Is, is there any parasites that are like from very old, like, dinosaur times or oh, like that oh, came yes, out of the arctic ice absolutely. or whatever yeah one of them that actually well used to be very common in australia but it has been eradicated is malaria the one i mean malaria is the disease the parasite that caused malaria is plasmodium which i think early 1980 has been er eradicated in australia so this has been known uh, to be with humans for centuries, I mean, for thousands of years. And even before humans, the parasite was there infecting other animals, but like different species, and then evolved to this one. And interesting about malaria is, as you know, it's transmitted to humans by mosquitoes. But one thing that you may not know is that it's only female mosquito that is responsible for transmission, not males. Can you guess why? Pregnancy? 
Exactly, you're getting close. You're very smart. I'm surprised that you say don't learn anything. Because <laughs> if the, fit, the male mosquitoes actually just feed from plants, you know, like you could just say they are very romantic just around plants and flowers and things. But uh, females, when vegan. they get Am pregnant, I right? <laughs> <laughs> but females, when they get pregnant, they need, uh, they are the one that suck the blood and they are the real uh, bees. Because they need more energy and food to feed the eggs. They have to look after those eggs and bring the offspring. So they are the ones that are actually coming to human and feed from the bloods of humans. And in the process of feeding from the blood, transfer the parasite from one person to another. Mos human mosquitoes actually can be considered as a shared needle of the human being. That's wow. how they spread the parasite, because that's the same one that goes and, you know, that's crazy. That's fascinating. Yeah. I know, I know you say that malaria has been eradicated in Australia, but just as a preventative measure, I do subsist almost completely on a diet of gin and tonic. Yeah. Uh, as, as we know, <laughs> quinine Very and tonic wise. water will keep will keep malaria. But yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm doing my part to stay you safe. You've got to do your bit. That's well, so no, yeah. no, You've got to, safe. You've got to get the jab. Yeah. 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 <laughs> As some doctors recommend, G and T. Yes, <laughs> the only ones I go to are the ones that recommend G and Ts. <laughs> You've been yeah, doctor Dr. shopping Nick again, Riviera. haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Although his his business card does have like quotation marks around the word doctor. <laughs> um, any other questions? I want to ask. Yeah, I want to ask, do you have a favourite parasite? Is there one yeah. that you have a real soft spot for? I like um, I like marine parasites especially because it's just, they, they are just so diverse. It's not like one species, it's just a group. But they are just so diverse and the way they live and their special type of life cycle is just so unique. You can't really believe what a beautiful, like I tell you about this one, um, this parasite is found on the gill of the fish in freshwater fish in river system. And uh, so when you open the operculum, you can see it. I mean, you can't see it with the naked eye. You have to actually have a magnifier and stuff. But these guys actually, when they become adult and quite young, they find each other. They cuddle each other. They look like a butterfly, like a cross like this. And they live like that forever. That they like happily oh. ever. <laughs> and it's the most committed, long-lasting relationship you see there. And that's just one example. And if you pick every single marine or aquatic parasite, they have their own story. And because it's a water system, they have their own, evolu evol um, how do you say, their own adaptation on how to survive, how to find their mate, and how do, to look after their children until they become another adult. Like the strategies that they developed so that they can, you know, like in this water system. And remember, they are really tiny. It's very difficult for them to find the next, you know, like their mate and everything. It's just amazing. And I wish just we, we had enough funding to, you know, like properly fund research just to understand how our nature works. But yeah, it's not that easy yeah. these days. Oh, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time my fiance calls me a parasite, I'm just going to be like, and you're a parasite too. And together we can just cross <laughs> at each your other well, the <laughs> years forever. <laughs> just make sure she and, sees, and she watches this podcast before. Otherwise, she <laughs> right. Right here, she'll, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. She'll know what I mean. She'll know. What yeah. I mean. It'll be fine. <laughs> Good, good. Women are good, good like that, aren't they? Yeah, she's good. She's good like If that doesn't fly, you know what, babe? You're the corner of my liver. You You're know? the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. So I think that's a lovely point to um oh here we go. We've got another I, I just wanna here we go. There's another question. Oh. Isn't there mm -hmm. a fish tongue parasite? Let's yes, answer we'll enter this one in there. There is, but that one, we don't call it tongue worm. So the one that we call tongue worm, and I was talking about in this uh, program tonight, this evening, that one is because it looks like a tongue, 
and it lives on in the nursery. The one that lives on the tongue of the fish in marine fish, it's actually it has global distribution, including in Australian fish. Uh, that has completely different name. They are actually a big group of them. And um, it's a it's a crustacean kind of things that lives on the tongue and uh, feed from the blood. It's a very nasty yeah. one for the fish, but it's it doesn't come Yes. Mm. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna not sleep tonight after I know the answer to this. <laughs> but is there is there a parasite on me right now? <laughs> Good question. Any any anywhere? It most likely yes. Most likely, yes, because as I said, like talks of tell me a few things. Do you eat a steak? Do you eat meat? Do you eat barbecue? Uh, yeah. So yeah. most likely, yes. Like toxoplasma, <laughs> commonly transmitted by raw or undercooked meat. So if you oh. like, to, like I take my steak raw or not raw. I mean undercooked, medium yeah, raw. Right. Yeah, and yeah. it most yeah. And uh, or if you have a cat, most likely you have it. Another common parasite is the uh, mite that lives like 60% of the population estimated to have it, and it lives um, in the eyelash. And again, doesn't cause any problem in healthy people. Only if you are stressed or something happens, your immune system gets suppressed, then these things come out and get out of control. It's very likely, yeah. You have either of those or maybe both. Toxoplasma oh. is an interesting one because it changes the behavior too. For example, if women are infected with that, it's been told that they get flirty or men get into fights or people who over speak, um, usually they are more infected with Toxoplasma than careful drivers. That's so, okay. Isn't that so yeah, that it, they, they can transmit the blood more? Is, is there some sort of behavioural thing um, where, yes. like, they make you more likely to spill blood or to, like, cough on somebody or something like that so that they can transmit better? Is that no, the, they only the get transmitted. Uh, so the final aim for this parasite is to get to the cat because cat is its main host. Uh, but it's an amazing parasite because if it gets picked up by other animals, including humans, it doesn't die. Usually parasites, if they go to the wrong host, they die. They need the right environment and right host. Um, so um, this one remains alive in anything you can think of. Chicken, pig, um, cattle, mice, humans, even earthworms beetles, fish, sharks, that sort of thing. You just name the animal. And it seems that they do it. They increase the risky behavior so that the animal dies and somehow this gets to the body of the cat. Yeah. Again, huh. because in a cat, it comes through feces and it goes again through mouth to the body. So if it finds its way to the environment... <laughs> It can go to the cat and it's yes. just sending a shiver down my spine. Do, do you know, <laughs> feel there, the there's something here in my man cave that ties into the, the the only reason I know what toxoplasmosis is is because of train spotting. <laughs> One of the main characters in the movie Train Spotting dies of toxoplasmosis. Oh, okay. There you go. So, um, so sweet dreams, uh, Dane. Yeah, and... <laughs> yeah, I'm quite literally stopping myself from scratching all of my hair yeah. Yeah. to get rid of the parasites out of it. <laughs> you're going to see me tomorrow, and I'm just going to be completely bald. I've just, just shaved shiny. every my entire body. <laughs> I'm just going to look. But you need like parasite this. to have a healthy immune system. Uh, it boosts your immune system. That I uh, thank you for trying to save me yeah. from shaving yeah. everything, <laughs> but I'm still going to. I'm going to look like a pool ball tomorrow. Yeah, just just try not to imagine all the mites crawling around on your eyelashes. Yeah. Stop, yeah. stop imagining right. all of the mites in your eyelashes. Stop <laughs> imagining that. Um, so we, we've gone over time. So let's let's um, uh, bring it into it now. But so much fun. Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Um, what a treat for me. Um, uh, I Do really I appreciate it. Do I have time it. for it's... my interpretive dance? Or we can't? 
That's all right. Next time, job, absolutely. Next, next time. time, I'll give you another right. twenty points, though. But next time, hang, next, hang on, I'll drop a, I'll drop a beat for you. Boops, 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 boops. <laughs> boops, 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 boops. <laughs> and um, just <laughs> if there's anything that any of you have to to plug or talk about, you know, let's let's take a minute or two to do that. Um, Shokufe, do you have any things that you're doing that you think people should know about coming up? A, a new uh, radio show, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. We just are parasite research, and um, yeah, usually, yeah, nothing much. Thank you very much for uh, this program. I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure how other people feel about it and how they going yeah. to sleep tonight, but it was yeah. fun for me. Thank you. <laughs> so much fun, Dane. Dane, do you have do you have any things that you want to talk uh, about? Normally, I have a gazillion shows coming up, but they've all been cancelled. I think the Canberra Comedy Festival is still on sale and is looking like they are probably going to go ahead. So I've still got tickets available if anyone wants to come and watch my show, Didgeridoozy. Um, or just give us a like on Facebook and keep up to date it or Instagram or whatever it is, all the social medias. Keep up to date with what I'm doing. Or go to danesimpson.com.au. Like, mm -hmm. share and subscribe. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yeah, don't you always have to sign off YouTube videos with, so guys, just smash that like and subscribe button there, hit the bell for all the details and the blah, 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 and we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Ow! <laughs> yeah, that. Do you want to do that, Jamie? Go for it. Uh, I've, I've, I've spent now. <laughs> I need Drained. a preventive gin and tonic. <laughs> and, and, and Sally, anything that we can we can do? To see more of yeah, look. You. Uh, well, absolutely, because you can't go anywhere at the moment. Everyone's locked in, so just download the ABC Listen app to your phone. Make Riverini yep. your home station, and any time between about twenty-five to seven and ten o'clock every weekday, you can join me for brekkie. Yeah, and uh, cool. it is yeah. it's still Science Week, so so please go out and uh, well, go out, go online, and do as many Science Week things as you can. Lastly, uh, again, thank you so much to all of you. Uh, again, an absolute treat. I've had a great time, and thank you very, very much. Yeah. Well, thanks, for thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. Love science. <laughs>